report from NBC News says every branch of the United States military is struggling to meet their recruitment goals this year. The all-volunteer force is not being filled because the amount of people eligible to serve has diminished due to issues such as drug use, criminal records, obesity, and possibly even the COVID-19 vaccine mandates. And joining us now to discuss is Tom Spohr, retired Army Lieutenant General and Director of the Heritage Foundation's Center for National Defense. Tom, welcome. Good to be with you and thank you for your service. Uh, first off, I want to get your thoughts on this recruiting crisis. How do you think we got to this point and how serious is it? Yeah, Tracy, it's about the serious it's ever been since the start of the all-volunteer army and military in 1973. It's never been this bad before. And frankly, we have seen this coming for a while, but I think the Pentagon has really ignored the, the warning signs. In 2018, the Army missed its recruiting goals. They scrambled around a little bit, but they really didn't take any decisive action either way. And so I think we've probably seen this coming for a while. I think that the tough labor market and maybe the pandemic accelerated things. Yeah, Tom, what do you think needs to be done uh, to bring up the recruitment numbers? Yeah, Tracy, a number of different things. But the, I think the first in my mind is that we need to reconnect America with its military. I think you can go through wide uh, swatches of the United States and people don't, they don't even know what the military does anymore. They don't know what the lifestyle is like. Uh, there's been a recent survey of, of young people that said that 50% of them don't even know that you can have a recreation or a hobby uh, when you're in the army. And so that, you know, that speaks to me that they really don't understand uh, the United States military anymore. And we need to get military people back in some of these states like the Dakotas, New Hampshire, Vermont, in order to reacquaint them with their military. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, one thing I want to talk about sort of, uh, you know, really on a serious note, um, with the recruitment numbers so low, I'm wondering what this means, you know, for our national security, especially as our top military threat, China, is really building up its military. Yeah, China continues to grow its military. Their budget went up 7% this year. Ours did not. Um, it frankly, Tracy, has some bad implications for our own national security. And the, the clearest indication of that is the United States Army is cutting its size by 12,000 soldiers next year. So it's actually shrinking because it doesn't believe it can recruit the necessary number of soldiers. And so that's a trend that we don't want to happen. The Army was already very small. If it goes down by 12,000 as it, as it plans to, it will be the smallest Army that we've had as a nation since 1939. Hmm. You know, we brought up the COVID-19 vaccine mandates um, earlier, and more than 60,000 soldiers um, now are not allowed to participate in their military duties due to their refusal to get the COVID vaccine. I, I want to get your reaction to that, especially, you know, as we're seeing the military struggling to recruit people. Yeah, I have mixed feelings about it, Tracy, coming up. You know, I spent 36 years in the Army. I had to get innumerable numbers of mandatory vaccines. I think the number is 17 uh, vaccines, you know, not some of them annual, but some of them less frequent. And so I'm, as a soldier, I was used to getting mandatory vaccines, but I also can see uh, what's happening as a result of this COVID, COVID vaccine, vaccine mandate. You know, there's statistics that say that young people uh, 33 percent of them haven't gotten the COVID vaccine and they have no plans to get one. And so as they as recruiters try and recruit people, they tell them, hey, you come in the military, you're going to need to take the COVID max vaccine. And that turns off a significant portion of people. We don't know that number, but it has to be big. Yeah. And according to this NBC uh, report, um, they're saying that of Americans who are ages 17 to 24 years old who are eligible to serve, that only just 9 percent had any interest in joining the military. Um, such a low number, I think the lowest since 2007. So I'm curious if you have any idea why there's such a maybe disinterest or, you know, not an interest in joining the military. Yeah, it's a number of things, dif uh, different things, Tracy. One of them is the very strong labor market. You know, I don't know where uh, you work, but where I work, there's companies paying $15, $18 an hour to young people, you know, that are still in high school to do jobs. And, and that's fairly extraordinary. And that the Army and the military has to compete with that. So that's one, the strong labor market. 
But then there's also this belief, and I, uh, that the military is becoming increasingly politicized, and and you'll get that from both sides. The left, you know, views the military sometimes as a breeding ground for extremism or racism, and then the right views the military as woke and a social experiment. And so the military is in a very difficult position right now, kind of being battered uh, by both sides. And young people are very attuned to this. They pick up on these dimensions in these conversations, and they wonder to themselves, why should I uh, join such a military? You know, and that brings me to my, my next question, Tom. I'm curious, you know, what inspired you to go into the military and serve our country? What was your story? Yeah, so I was in college. I went to the uh, ROTC program. I really didn't have a lot of other options at the time I graduated from college. So I said, let's give the Army a try. Uh, so uh, I didn't know much about it. But after I got in the military, it, you know, I loved it. I loved the people that were in it. They taught me so much about discipline and, and self-control and how to lead people. And so I think that's a very common thing that people sometimes come in the military not knowing much about it. But then after they get in, they realize how much it's doing for them. And it did, it did so much for me. And it does lots for young people every day. It makes them into better leaders and better citizens. Absolutely. I can say on a personal note, I've seen that in my own family as well who serve. Um, thank you so much, sir, for your time today and speaking with us. And thank you again for your service, Tom. We appreciate it. Thank you.